And welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. This is, I believe, episode 15. As the nation of Austria in the Great War mod of Hearts of Iron 4. And uh, we're holding our own as best we can against the mighty onslaught of the combined forces of the British Empire, France, the United States, Japan, Russia, and on and on it goes. So, uh, things are continuing to go fairly well against France. Now, if it were only that simple, things might go okay. But, of course, we have to deal with the United States, which appears to be once again invading up here on the north, along with some uh, Portuguese infantry units and everything else that goes along with that. So, ace pilot promoted few take as many risks as the brave pilots of the Austrian Air Force. Otto Meyer, a skilled pilot known under the call sign The Lightning, has distinguished himself in not only returning alive from the recent mission over northern France, but living through significant victories and many critical encounters. Held up as a shining example of Austrian courage, Otto's recent promotion has been highly publicized. Although the people may view war as hell, more hell than glory, many are glad to see there are still heroes to rally behind. So, uh, this of course is the first major war where air power becomes a factor. And, uh, you know, there are movies made about this. There was a movie recently called Flyboys that talks about American pilots who went over and fought in the, in the French uh, Air Forces. And, of course, no pilot probably in history is as famous as the uh, German flying ace Baron von Richthofen, the Red Baron, who uh, was shot down and killed late in the war. And the man who was given credit for shooting him down was actually a Royal Air Force pilot uh, who almost certainly didn't shoot him down um he was likely killed by ground fire probably from a uh, australian anti-aircraft unit but a man uh in the air force was given credit for having shot him down because he had shot at the red baron a few minutes before the red baron ended up crashing and dying of a bullet wound uh that hit him in the chest and i think probably hit his heart or his lungs or something but uh that is not uh, he was not killed by that air-to-air -air fire. He was killed by ground fire. Um, I believe also um, that President Theodore Roosevelt's son, I think it was Kermit, uh, but I know it was one of his sons. may have been Theodore Roosevelt Jr., but I'm thinking for some reason it was Kermit Roosevelt. Uh, I know one of his sons was an Air Force pilot who was uh, killed, who was shot down, um, buried with great honor by the Germans. Let's see. Um, all right, we got another extra research slot coming our way. Excellent. So we continue to press the line forward here in France. Maybe there is hope yet that we take Paris before too many American units get into the fight. Wow, wait a second. Okay, he's still got 14. I thought I only saw two units here. It's mostly we've got a bunch of American divisions kind of holding the line here now, and I don't. I don't think necessarily it's a good idea to try and push that. Uh, yeah, we're stronger, but not stronger enough to risk that right now. Let's take a look real quick at casualties. 1.26 million for me. French are finally over 1 million, but they've still got somewhere between 200 and 400 divisions in the field. And that is the majority of the Allied force at this point. Um British Raj, a ton as well. You know, India's got a lot of people, and they've got a lot of people in the fight. So, all right, we press ahead. We've got a massive amount of divisions, uh, two, over 260. I mean, we just numbers-wise, in terms of the number of divisions, we've got about three to one here on the Western Front. I just keep waiting to see where the U.S. is going to pop up because I know they've got to pop up somewhere, but um, it may take them a while to get those units into position. All right, we can build some land forts once that's complete. Let's look at construction for a minute here uh, and trade as well. Just want to make sure that we're making best use of all of our trade. Looks like we don't need quite as much oil as we're trading for right now. 
everything else I think we're good on. All right, come on, let's start taking down the French here. Of course, despite everything that's happening in France where we're pushing ahead, it's really not changing the war at all. This is going to drag on for decades, I think. All right, well, at least we're pressing ahead up to my um, the battle lines that I set here. I really wish we could press through and just take Belgium out of this war, but that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. What are these units here? So, oh, the Soviet Unions, uh, I think they're just moving them around to get them in position to, to help fight. Looks like they've largely... Uh, the, the German forces on this side have largely pushed Japan out of that front with the Soviets, which is why the Soviets are starting to turn the tide against the Russians here. Now, there there are some units uh, for Japan fighting over here, so some of that's going on, but it doesn't look like there's a lot of fighting going on at the moment. All right, things are looking really good in France right now. I think France must have just shifted a lot of their units elsewhere. Of course, nothing happening here. Yeah, I mean, see, look, France has got a lot of their units over here because they're occupying this territory here along with the UK. France has uh, Iraq. Of course, still no, uh, no invasions happening. No attempted invasions happening at the moment. There is one up here, which it looks like we're turning back. But just to be extra cautious, we're going to shift another unit over here. I'm going to get these guys up on the coast, too. Just got to keep a constant watch out uh, for what's happening up there. Wow, France. Looks like we broke through in France. We're... Starting to move the line a little bit. Finally, something's happening. Now, let's start pushing toward Paris. What's the casualties look like? 1.32 million. Now, Germans are coming up on 5 million casualties. I wonder what the French are looking like. 1.1 million. But yeah, it looks like something happened here because we're just, I mean, it's just really kind of a breakthrough happening now. We still don't have air superiority, though. I'd like to change that if I can. I'm not entirely sure how. But where do we have some reserve units that we can get into the action? These are bombers, though. Yeah. Bombers don't help me. I need more fighters. And I just don't have the manpower to get more fighters into the field. But keep pressing ahead, my boys. Let's get a little more aggressive, shall we? Maybe we'll start... All right, we just got 23... French divisions encircled. This could be devastating to their cause. If we can take out these units, take out 20, 23 divisions. There's only 22 left now, 21. That's going to be devastating to the French army. Down to 17. Let's look at those casualties now. 1.2 million and rising. The number of divisions changing rapidly. Very nice. 1.4 million. Got some more French divisions encircled. Finally, something is happening in this war. Finally going 2% in favor of the aggressors. Looks like we're starting to have some success in Belgium as well. Oh boy, okay. Meanwhile, there are the Brits. They've landed in northern Germany. They finally decided that what I was doing over here was not conducive to their plans, and so they've switched. So let's go ahead and shift a few of these units over. Although it looks like Germany is going to be able to handle that on their own. But the British had to do something to take the pressure off for France. Because France is in trouble.
On to Paris, boys. On to Paris. I'm equally excited about the idea of maybe destroying the Belgians, though. I don't know if the French just maybe ran out of manpower. What happened? But something obviously happened that just kind of broke the French. Because that went from a multi-year stalemate to suddenly being a non-issue. And, and things are going well here. Japan's just about pushed out. And it looks like the Brits are about to be pushed out of Germany as well. So I feel like maybe a tide has turned here. Let's just kind of watch France for a little bit. Still don't have air superiority at some point. I would love to have the manpower to do that, but just not there. We may get may get to Paris in this episode. There's just not that many French units there. Just a ton of divisions for me. Let's look at what it looks like now. Um, wow, I mean, only about 100 French, French divisions still in the region. I... Between me and the Germans, we've got almost 300. Yeah, I know we've got planes in reserve, but I can't do anything with them. If only I had an air base that was a little closer. Come on, on to Paris, on to Paris. Let's do it. There's another extra research slot. Very nice problem to have. Trying to decide what to do with all of this research. If only I had manpower. But hey. Beggars can't be choosers. Alright. Tell you what, let's go ahead and start focusing on our aviation effort a little bit. Even though we've got a lack of manpower to get more planes into the field, at least maybe we can work on the technology involved with those planes and get an advantage there. Alright, so things have certainly stalled in our drive toward Paris, but I'm equally hopeful for a drive toward Antwerp and Brussels. It looks like he's loading up down here. I'm, yeah, I, I wondered if maybe he wasn't considering trying to open up a second front against me since he's starting to have uh, so little success in France. Alright, so let's just keep pressing ahead. Let's see what this looks like now. Uh, 1.42 million casualties for me. 1.5 million for the French. And that little bar has started to shift. They are 10% of the way toward capitulation. Obviously a long way to go, but that's closer than we were a couple of weeks ago in this fight. So let's keep on moving. Let's see what happens. Things have definitely slowed down though, but I like the direction it's going. It'd be really lovely to see us be able to encircle another French army somewhere and destroy some more of those fo forces. Maybe the Americans, because that's largely who... Interesting to see Americans and Japanese forces fighting alongside one another, defending Belgium. But that's largely who this is. There are a lot of American and Belgian uh, and Japanese units in here right now. If it weren't for the Americans, I, I can only imagine how well I'd be overrunning these guys right now. Getting closer to Paris. We're just a couple of territories away from Paris now. Alright, there's a research in uh, air doctrine we're going to continue that effort in air doctrine a couple of days away from military camera all right and there's an upgrade to my planes so we're going to go ahead and and make that switch so even though we we can't get new planes into the air 
we can get better planes into the air to replace the existing one. So we'll start making those upgrades and maybe that'll help in the war. So having six research slots is really nice because you're constantly researching new technologies. Of course, at some point, I'm going to run into an issue where I'm going to be so far advanced on everything that I'm just going to be taking big penalties, time penalties, no matter what I research. All right, here we go. We're starting to starting to turn the tide on some of these fights now. We are about to be within one territory of France, and the Americans finally have some units on the ground in France trying to help defend. See how many men the Americans have lost now? They're up to 57,000. Historically, the Americans didn't lose certainly nearly the number of men that other countries lost either in World War I or World War II. Uh, I don't mean to minimize the casualties. Uh, certainly, many, uh, many men were lost for the Americans in, in both wars, but when you compare that to Russia, the Soviet Union, when you compare it to what France suffered, what Germany lost in those wars, it really is very minor by comparison. All right, how's this one coming? Potentially a week away from getting within one territory of Paris. All right, they just turned the tide there, though. They got some more divisions in place. All right, we just encircled some British Raj and French units. We're going to destroy them. I love seeing that. Love seeing those units get encircled and destroyed. It makes my job way easier. Nice big bulge in the French line now. And let's kind of take let's take a look and see what's happening with these casualties. France suddenly almost up to 2 million. As I encircle those divisions and destroy them, they they lost men fast and furious and that's why this is becoming easier as uh, he's just losing the ability to fight because he just doesn't have the divisions to do it with. He's down down to about 100. Um, and, and, and many of those probably have a lot of attrition, too. Here we go. 37 divisions pressing ahead. And there's the delay doctrine. That's a land doctrine uh, discovery. We're going to go with elastic defense next. I love getting these new doctrines, uh, land doctrines discovered. I, I think that's going to be really helpful. And I think maybe technology has had a part in why the tables have turned here in France. But I shouldn't get so excited about what's happening in France that I forget that that is just one front in a very large war. So I've got to be careful here and, and watch. Looks like for the most part the Soviets have turned the tide on the Russians and on their enemies elsewhere. I don't think the manpower is there for an invasion of Austria. Nothing happening on the northern part of Germany. I think the tide has turned in this war even with the Americans in it. Maybe the Americans just don't have the Navy yet to be able to get their troops over in large numbers. I don't know. I don't think we need seaplanes. Um, Alright, let's look at some bomber upgrade. How close are we to Paris? We're right on the doorstep of Paris. Excitement. I love it. How about could we please start invading uh, Belgium and take them out of this thing. Come on, guys. It's now at 3%. Woo! Exciting. Doesn't seem like much, but it's better than the 0% that we've had for going on four years in this war. Looks like we're kind of slowing down and waiting for the rest of uh, the units to kind of get settled and uh, get where they need to be. I believe... Yep. While the manpower is certainly not where, not where it needs to be, I am able to get some new units into the field. So we're definitely going to do that. 
Now, where do I put them is the question. Um, things are going well over there in France, so I'm, I'm rather inclined to at least send a few down to help shore up the border there. The rest we will send over to the Western Front. In fact, where's Paris? I can't see Paris all of a sudden. There it is. Okay. Is there too much to ask that we just go ahead and take Paris here? There's only two divisions defending Paris. All right. I want to take I want to take Paris before this episode's over. I never thought I'd be in a position to say that, but that's where things are. Got a while before any more technology comes around. I'm surprised he isn't shifting more units over to the defense of Paris. No, no, no. Don't go that way. Go to Paris. I want to take Paris. I'm greedy. There you go. Come on. 80%. Still going to last a while. Paris is not going to be an easy nut to crack. Probably why my generals were trying to take other places first. Here we go. Shift these guys over too. Probably once this territory's taken they'll these men will attack Paris because that'll border it there we go yes 23 days will Paris fall in the summer of 1918 could it happen depends on how many additional divisions he's able to shift over there for defense Let's look, make sure we just kind of keep one eye on what's happening in the rest of the world here. I don't want to get so greedy that I'm not paying attention to everything else. All right, looks like Germany has kind of reestablished the border with, now there's a couple of pockets of Russians, but for the most part, things have settled down there. All right, back to Paris. Come on, guys. We need more than 28 divisions to make this happen. All right, time out. We got some free civilian factories we got to deal with. How about some more infrastructure? Of course, I don't know how on earth we're going to deal with the UK, even if we do manage to defeat the French. The UK is over there across that English Channel, and there is no chance I've got a navy that can make that happen. Maybe Germany does. Alright, where are we? Still 29 days here. We're going to need some additional units to make this happen. All forces, shift. Take Paris. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care how important you think it is. I want Paris. Alright, how about artillery... Uh, let's go siege artillery. I'm not actually really developing any, but might as well fill out all the technology tree I can here. 39 divisions now in the attack on Paris. 42. And yet still not an easy task. Come on, guys. And where are those new units that I just assigned? There we go, we're at 96%. 54 divisions now assaulting Paris. Come on, guys. There's only two divisions defending. If we can wear them down, this thing's over. Another territory fell next to Paris. Here we go, here we go. 60 divisions attacking. 62 divisions. Come on. Two divisions cannot hold that town for this long. 98. We're almost there. I can't believe he hasn't put more units into that defense. Come on. 62 divisions can take this town. 
He's got most of his defense happening over here. All right. We're just bypassing Belgium now and just going for France, I guess. What do I got to do to take this city? There we go. 99. 64 divisions. Once Paris falls, we'll wrap this one up. But I am not ending this until that city has fallen. Come on, come on. Three days. Two days. There's one division left. There it is. Here we go. Come on. I want to see it happen. Yes! And we'll stop right there for now. Paris has fallen to the combined might of the Germans and the Austrians. Can France be far behind? 1.82 million French have died now. Almost half of that in the last couple of months. France is now 40% of the way to capitulation. I'm thinking at some point we're probably going to have to do something about the French down here in order to, to hasten that. But I'm not going to get greedy. I want to deal with the ones that are here first. And I want to deal with Belgium and get them taken out of the war. So once we stabilize this front, might be time to focus on the Belgians. In the meantime, the war itself is now at 10% in favor of the aggressors. Even with the United States into the war, they've lost 83,000 men. They are not much of a factor. They're only 1% factor right now in this war. The French are 73%, and they are being defeated. So there you have it. I'm thinking my technology, uh, maybe they ran out of manpower. I don't know. Um, could be a lot of factors, but whatever it is, I'm glad. So thanks for watching. If you would hit that thumbs up, I'd greatly appreciate it. I think the, the tide has turned, and we may just win this war after all. So I'll be back with another episode hopefully tomorrow. Thanks for watching.